everyone. Welcome back to Living with Mangoes. Who do I have here? Hey, I'm Nick from Nick's Edibles out here in St. Cloud. So Nick, um, I had Gwendolyn come down here and she did a nice, beautiful video on your place. So that's going to get a lot of hits. Everyone go check out the American Cuban Gardeners video. When she came and visited Nick, it is a fun video to watch. But the main thing here is to get some other perspectives from Nick. Nick, I want to I want you to tell me what is your current endeavor and that you like to have a lot of fun with. What do you like to do? You know, I I think it's the Java Takavas. Okay. Because I live in the swamp a little bit, so it's a little soggier here. I got beautiful big oak trees over there. Let's go towards the Jabos then. Yep. If that's your if that's your love right now, let's go to the Jabos. I started to put some Jabos on the ground and um they're still small, small jabos. Mm -hmm. Most of them I got from you, actually. Okay. And nice. um, yeah, so I'm trying to get that going, but I'm, I want to make sure that I keep that pH level in the ground mm -hmm. right, you know, because I want to see nice yep. growth on the jabos. What is your... Es Espuma Holly Tone would be the go-to for that because they got acidifier in it. Okay, the Holly Tone. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. So oh. then I'll do that. And then, and then... Any other advice on the jabos? I mean, when, when you're making your... When I'm making my mix, I use a lot of... Uh, pine bark pines because mm -hmm. they're real acidic and uh pine bark. Peat, and peat moss peat but, moss good but i i like i like the pine bark fines because it's way more cost effective it, as you can see here one of them bales of peat moss is like 20 or 30 dollars yeah for 30 dollars you get a whole bucket yard of pine bark fines so if you're trying to be cost effective nice nice yeah and then and then always if your job was in the ground mulch them with the pine bark fines because the fines of them tiny little pieces yes, that, yes. that break down in less than a year. So okay. now you have nice acidic okay. soil to yeah, mend I just got I just got a, a, a nice uh, delivery, but I'm not sure if it's primarily oak and some pine. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they do the mixes and they really yep. don't tell you what it is. So, all right, yep. let's as show long, As long as they're not getting your Brazilian peppers, who cares, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but as, as you can see under here, I've probably got 15 different kinds of Javos. 15 different kinds, okay. Probably, I don't know, six, 600, 700 trees under here. Yeah, and Chelo, get a little close over here. Look, look how beautiful these jabos look. They are beautiful and they're under the oak tree. Yep. So they keep nice semi shade over here. <laughs> Used to be more shade, with, but all the moss fell off the trees from the hurricane. You know, Nick, <laughs> I, like, I like the way you're making this row of bananas here. Here, look, I just, really nice. I just got a variegated banana from oh, a friend of mine. Nice, nice. I have another one up there. But looks really good. I like this. I like are you familiar up. with a uh, dwarf green banana? Not the dwarf green, no. Dwarf green is a mutation of dwarf red. Look, look at the trunk. You see the red in it? Yeah. That, that's the same as the Cuban red, but it mutated and went back to yellow, but the flesh is orange. Nice. And uh, my orange understanding wow. is uh, Lacatan's another one that has orange flesh, but they have an, a different uh, uh, nutrient in there or something that's good for us that yellow bananas do not have. I don't know if it's beta carotene or right, there, right, there's right. there's something in addition to And you don't know anybody growing traditional bananas with the seeds still inside. I mean I have Thai black back there that has seeds in it. Really? Okay. Uh-huh. Thai black. And I think I have some Siam Ruby over here, which just if they have seeds they automatically call them ornamental. Right. But that doesn't mean they right, don't right, still right. have good fruit. The question is how difficult is it to actually get that seed to produce? I tried seeds before and they're really, really difficult. They're hard to get them to Germany. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what is it? Musa Velatini, the, the pink banana, the one that... Yes. That I could never get them to germinate. My buddy, my buddy's dad did. And 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 that's that's actually a really short cycle. They get, they get In a year's time, you've already harvested fruit on them. Oh, wow. From like seed or whatever. All right. So let's get but, back to these jobbles real quick. Yeah, you got all these reds in here. There's a couple of blues in the ground. Nice. This is a white. You got... Scarlet's over here. Some huge sabras back in there. Mm, I see some yellows back there also. Yep. Those are nice big you. yellows. Yep, and they're all fruiting now. Yeah, so guys, if you're interested in Jabos, this is the place to come. Nick's Edibles. He has a lot of nice Jabos, and not to mention, he has very good prices. And in addition to the Jabos, kind of like, you know, my Terralotta over there on pineapple rootstock? Yes. Because I live in the swamp, this area over there stays wet, but I got like a 200 foot strip that I'm gonna do some alamas, some cheriladas, some custard apple, and even close- All with pond apple. All with pond apple, because that I can't plant anything else over there, but maybe bananas, but I think it's still a little too wet for bananas maybe to thrive. Maybe some sugar canes, if you could get yep. away with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm gonna fill on. So I, I'm fascinated by plants that do well 
in super wet conditions yeah, right now. I mean, you got to do what you got to do here, right? Yep. So you got to find what the best method is. If I, if I didn't live here, I don't think I'd have gotten so big into Javos. It, it, it's not that I don't want it, it. It's almost out of necessity, but not really necessity. Right. You know what I mean? But Just, you have to have the passion for it to begin with. So. Correct. Yes. And then, you know. And so what other um, new endeavors you have going that uh, get you nice and cheery and happy? I mean, you always got just bananas. Your, just your personal stuff. Because, you know, one thing is having a nursery and selling stuff. And, and mm. another thing is your personal passion. What do you like to do when you're here at the most? Yeah. I mean, for me, my favorite group of fruit are Eugenius. Okay. I like the Eugenius because they got, there's so much diversity in them. The difference between, say, a Patanga Tuba and a Cherry of the Rio Grande. Yes, yes. So, yes. so far, night and day difference. But, but again, the, and those are other trees. When Gwendolyn was here with Yasamin that day, mm -hmm. I noticed that they tasted the new Zills variety of black Suriname cherry. The, and while I was watching that video, I was, I was telling myself, how can they not like that? It I is an amazing fruit. Disgu I love Eugenius. <laughs> Suriname are disgusting. Did you eat them as a kid? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I ate the reds, but then when the blacks yep. came out, I tasted the blacks and I enjoyed them. I got me a few trees. Of I can eat the black enjoyed. ones. The red ones make me want to vomit. Yeah, the black but, ones, you just got to let it go. Let it go but what I found go. out, you know, it's the first question I asked you. Did you eat them as a kid? 75% of people who like Suriname cherries ate them as a kid. Back when they were little kids. And they got kind of used to the taste run, in their oh. brain, right? Something with, with the, run, the, running the Running the neighborhood, playing, yeah. you know, picking fruit, being like, I don't even need my, I could survive on my own and forage food. <laughs> so, so now as an adult, even if you don't like the taste, it takes you back to, to uh, the memories. Yeah, those and, memories. And that's what I've noticed from all this is, is all the, the, the cultural stuff how how tight cultures are tied yes. to to certain fruits in different regions yes java tacabas you ask any brazilian person mm -hmm. every single one of them say oh my god i love that fruit yeah you ask any italian person about a fig they'll say oh my god i love that fruit and this is why i keep telling people like spanish people love that traditional mango the valencia pride because mm -hmm. it has the peach flavor it has especially that pineapple apple flavor and that sweetness and it's not overbearing overwhelming that a lot of these yep. hispanics like they really do like that. It brings them back to home. Yep. Yeah. Hundred percent. For sure. So, what else you want to tell us, Nick? Um. Let's see here. More jobs. Um, let's see what sparks our curiosity over there. Uh huh. Oh, I see that you have those beauties over there next to the tree. The monstera. Monstera there. deliciosa. Look yeah. how beautiful they look. Hey, we'll come around. I got a bunch of fruit on there. Ironically. I have one fruit just starting to ripen, really? and, it, and it disappeared. What? Don't I, tell me a raccoon took it. I, I don't know what took it. I don't see much raccoons around here. So, something or someone took it, though. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hope it's not a someone. I mean, what you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> at this point, so be it. Man, this guy, three years ago, was a three-gallon plant like this. Wow, look at this. Look at this, Cello. And then you it's see amazing. Look at all them fruit up in there. Let's go up here, Cello. Let's look at these fruit. Oh, wow, look at this. Next year, this time, these will be ready because they take Now, it. let me ask you something, Nick. It's traveling up this tree. Is it taking any nutrients from the tree or is it just using the bark to hold on to? It's just using the bark to hold on to. I mean, they do have air roots, so I imagine they, they would suck nutrition from there also. Maybe just from the bark area, right? Because mm -hmm. the tree is getting most of the nutrition from underneath the ground. Yeah, so. yeah it's, it's still in the ground. It's yeah, still go, the yeah. roots still go down. So but That is a beauty. Look at that. I had two fruit off it this year. I ate one, some something else ate the other. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Vanilla bean orchids. Uh, Did it meet your expectation? Berries. Did it meet your expectation? Yes. Because there's there Every, is a lot of hype. Have you tried them? I, I tried a piece of it. <laughs> everything they, they shared, shared, they shared. Everything yeah. they say is correct. It is that good. Good, good, good. You, you know, like. Yeah, I bought some from you not so long ago. Okay, yeah, And I, I put them under uh one of my older mango trees that it has a nice bark and stuff like that so they're down there they're looking happy and hopefully it'll, the same thing will happen it'll start traveling up that tree like that little jabo starting there's a the baby jabo i love the same Juba. <laughs> nick um if there's a story that you would like to tell when it comes to your nursery or to an experience that you've had that it keeps coming back to your memory that it makes you feel happy what would that be I like to I like to ask questions that yeah. a lot of people do uh -huh. not ask. <laughs> you, you, you know what? Out of out of all this, what what it what it really is, it really brings it home and makes it is, is that I get to do all this from my home. Right. My 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 land, my house, my property provides for my family. Right. Literally and figuratively, financially, shoot, even emotionally. Maybe not always good, but 
No, so, but you know what I mean? It like, does because I, when I come home from work, I work as a school teacher. When I come home from work and I'm tired as shit, I like to go into my yard and just relax. Uh huh. Relax. It brings me down again. So yeah, this, it, it has something to do with physiological, psychological, all yep. that. For 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 me, the Mar the American dream, my my version, because we all have a slightly little different version of the same American dream, is is for me and my land to provide for my family. Good. And good. Going back to the basics. Yeah. Because uh, everybody's buying stuff from the stores all the time. God forbid something happens. At least you have something yep. here to. Uh, to and and, and me, I'm just a fat kid, so I only grow food, fruit. I don't grow veggies and greens and stuff like that. But hey, if the, that's, that's Gwendolyn's job over yeah, there, right? But if, <laughs> but if the world decides to end, I do ha even growing my fruits has taught me the skills I need to transfer into something different, sustainable food. You know what I mean? So, so peeps, listen up. You got to come to this man's place, okay? Nick's Edibles over in St. Cloud. Nick, would you like to say any final words? Um, I, I got all kinds of oddball stuff. I mean. Look, look right here, Seash seashore mangosteen here. Look at that mangosteen. And this is seashore, this is one of the most Oh, that's another ones. thing about his place. Another thing about his place is that he does tend to carry things that a lot of other nurseries don't have. So it's good to come over here and take a look around and browse around. You might find something that you may like, something completely different, right? Yeah, I mean, you got coffee plants, tea plants, black pepper, you know, a lot, a lot of less, you know, every nursery's got the same 20 plants. Yeah. That's true. Everybody a lot of got nurses the same carry the same plants, thing over and over and, and, and over. those same 20 plants we broker from the same 10 other places. Yes, and, yes, yes, yes. But, but there's, so much, there's so much other cool stuff to grow. Yeah. The, the, you know. Well, Nick, with that, we're going to cut it here. Thank you so much. Appreciate having you here every time, man. Man, thank you. All right, guys. Peace. Living with mangoes. <laughs>